Hello, Tony from Hurricane Wind Power here, and today I am here to give my State of the Wind Power World address. And um, just for a moment, you know, I've been on both sides of this business. I am an enthusiast of small wind power. I have used it in my personal life, and I've been a seller for eight years. Um, where we're at now has gotten to be a point of being ridiculous. Um, so as a seller, I can understand what it's like to build a company only to have people come along and, you know, say negative things and try to tear you down. And it seems like a lot of that goes on and happens. On the other end of things is other enthusiasts see advertising that becomes more and more completely ridiculous. You know, they, they feel that they need to they need to call it, they need to call it out, they need to call it how they see it. So a state of conflict exists and where I'm at personally with the whole thing is simply this. You know, if a guy puts a rating on a wind turbine that started at 600, 800, 1200, capped off at 1600, now it's gone to 1700, 1800, 2000 watts. And there's one crazy guy in Oklahoma with a water pipe blade that personally bashes us that apparently can get 5kW out of a Delco wind turbine somehow. Go figure. I, you know, I, I don't know. But the better question for me is this. How can it be in 2015 that people can still lack fundamental understandings of how this equipment works? Um, I understand that the people that make quite a bit of fun of me, you know, drill bit Tony or whatever, and our attempts to show people how the equipment works, apparently we've we failed. Apparently we've only been a certain amount successful because people still believe that when the wind blows four miles an hour, they're going to run up on the roof and they're going to see something that makes 1600 watts. People believe a lot of things and a lot of the false information that is coming out and it's disseminated, you know, in this business or any business or any walk of life, you can choose to become a victim and say it's this, uh, this guy's fault or it's the other person's fault that I'm not where I want to be. What I'm choosing to do is we're going to educate. We're going to show people what works, how it works, why it works. And I'm going to go ahead and say on this series of videos that we're going to do, um, there'll be some product comparisons. We're not going to call the name of any products from any other companies. Anyone who does so in the comment section, that comment will be removed. And I'll have this set on as comments come in. I will review them, so this isn't about anybody else. This is about Tony, this is about Hurricane Wind Power, and this is about education, education of people new to wind power on how these products work. What I have in front of me today is a couple of our alternators, wind alternators. Um, got some video that came in this is our white lightning I've got a customer video thanks to Steve up in Canada um, we're gonna have a customer section when when we get this video called putting it down and out of our 24 volt white lightning 
we got 58 amps. He had a uh, continuous output of 48 amps. Over 1,000 watts. Real output. Real stuff. Twenty nine, twenty four, yeah. Those are typicals as uh, we go throughout the night. And uh, but yeah, the peak down there was uh, that was pretty amazing. Yeah, fifty eight. Wow. Talk to you there. Um, so, you know, as far as the construction on our new white lightning wind turbine, this is how it'll come out to the customer. Really heavy. Maybe if you could get over here just a minute and show, you know, from the back, you know, this is quarter inch plate. Um, this is very heavy, well constructed, zinc rich, powder coated stuff. The shaft on this wind turbine. Um, it's tapered, you know, I've seen people that have shafts on the wind turbine where, you know, the hub gets to moving around and it cuts through the thing. This tapered shaft in and of itself, I'm not even going to tighten this down, but if you can come up over this here a minute, uh, I have got it upside down, I'm sorry about that. But even without the bolt on it, you can see how this guy here, you know, it, it, it turns. And it's hard to pull off. So the taper inside the shaft is functional in and of itself to retain the blades. Um, this guy over here is an axial flux wind turbine. A lot of argument about this going on this week. This is a great generator, and you know, they're not that hard to build, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull some excerpts, you know. Hugh Pickett did this design, and he didn't just start out with this design. If you watch his PowerPoints over the years, he arrived at this conclusion about how to build these generators. And that they should be built this way because what you have here is a radial generator. So when something rotates in this circle, we have a magnet in here that has to pull away from the stator. And this, this one is built, this one's built correctly. So it turns smooth for radial. Um, but as far as low wind production goes, um, you know, this, this thing over here, if you can imagine, I pulled this apart, if you can imagine the stator core on this, um, there's nothing for it to pull away from. It's a, it's a sliding action. It's a very efficient design. It's very good for low wind production. And, you know, from being on both sides of it, we want to do what works here. And, I mean, yeah, I can totally understand from a wind turbine, you know, seller's um, perspective, which I'm, I'm in myself, this is not easy to ship. This is difficult to ship. It's difficult to manufacture, you know, in, in a certain, um, I shouldn't say that it's difficult to manufacture. That's probably, a, that's probably misspeaking. It's difficult to turn over in mass volume and get the shipping down. It's a heavy turbine. It typically takes um, more structural integrity in the tower. The blades on these things are typically bigger. So, I mean, there's some reasons why certain folks may not, you know, may not want to do this. There's places for all of these products. There's a Tillman place for most of these products. And there's some products out there that are just poor products, they don't perform, and you know, no matter how much uh, you, you go over this, it you know, it, it, it seems to be very little movement. So I pose the question today, 
you know, rather than arguing over the same stuff, rather than going over the same territory again and again, why not educate people to where they understand things like we can't stick a wind turbine in front of a fan and get more power out of it than the fan puts into it. Why don't we educate people to, to where they understand the relationship between torque and power generation? And I'm not going to go on and on, but this is going to be the beginning of some very small four or five minute segments and talking points to educate people on how this stuff works because the lack of understanding exists there's nothing wrong with small wind turbines there's something wrong with social media uh, there's something wrong with the mental capacity of some of the people in the small wind community and on YouTube and there's something wrong with, with lots of stuff that is irrelevant and it's not really a talking point that I care to go into um, but this is um, this is our hurricane vector great product um, you know again paper shaft it's got a nose cone which is a functional piece of the product I'll show you guys why here in the next week or so we've got a lot coming for you and uh, I appreciate your time today. That's well, that's the state of the nation. We're going to see what we can do to improve it. Tony from Hurricane Wind Power for today. Thank you.